Sometimes in life, you find yourself on the right side of the line. Do you think there's a little PTSD somewhere in there in the biathlon? I mean, you've got somebody <laughs> wore out to their wits end, and now you're going to hand them a rifle? <laughs> Is that really a good idea? I mean, I'd be like that one girl, Carrie Strug, and she made that jump with a broken ankle. I could do that. Live from Texas, this is the Dryline Farmer Podcast. You hear that? It's Brent and Landon, and this is the Dryline Farmer Podcast. Just, just one minute. <laughs> oh, sorry, man. I had to take one before we got started. Hey, everybody. This is the Dryline Farmer Podcast, and I am your host, Brent Carlson, as Ashton just said, and with me, as always, is Landon Nolan. Landon. You're up in A Town tonight. Is all the snow melted and uh, all the highways back and opened up? Oh, everything's full speed. How full is speed. how is that? Um, did they like re- start working again on that overpass they built that goes from like when you come off of I forty over to I twenty seven? Or you know where I'm talking? What or maybe it's not I twenty seven. Maybe it's like George. I don't know. But you know what I'm talking about. If, if you're talking construction in Amarillo, you're going to have to be very specific. So you come off I-40, and they made that real big, tall overpass that, that, that spirals yeah. up back off to the south. That don't, that's not the one that – yeah, it is. It's the one that puts you on 27. I mean, yeah, on yeah. I-27. Are they still working on that? Because that's in your neighborhood, isn't it? They usually put in about 12, 12 minutes a week on that. Band oh, okay. Of work. So do they like do like seven and a half hours of prep time each day or what? I don't do anything like there's there's all these jobs. I mean, we're surrounded just just where I live. We're surrounded by construction jobs and you never see anybody ever. Huh? I-27 I- I-27 before you exit to get to our house has been has been under and it's looked the exact same since we moved in July. Yeah. And that's been I mean, seven months ago or eight yeah. or nine. Yeah. yeah. I think huh. I've seen people working out there like twice. So Some guy like, Playing on a skid loader one day probably wasn't even construction worth it. <laughs> right, probably some buy some guy in a bywise <laughs> deal. <laughs> yeah, they probably just hired a guy like, hey, this thing needs to run a little. Can you go cruise it around? Yeah, we need day? to put. We need, this is like the county commission. Look, we need to put some hours on these graders. <laughs> oh man, yeah. So like we were in, so we were we've been in Fort Worth uh, twice in the last three weeks, and amazingly enough. I guess they finished all the big projects because, I mean, you've got freaking six lanes going uh, both ways, and, I mean, it's a dream going through there until it freaking snows or an ice storm happens in the DFW Metroplex because that place shuts the F down. We were there this past week, and it not all usually if they get a winter storm, it's an ice storm. Well, they actually had at least about an inch of snow on top of the ice that they had already gotten. And I mean that place shuts down. Everybody goes home. You can't hardly get even get a place to eat. We ate at the old pancake house. And so we walked in. This is just like an old style, you know, like if anybody's familiar with the pancake station in Amarillo, it's a lot like that. And half of the they just had half of the uh, uh restaurant open because they had three waitresses and they were all named Flo. <laughs> and they had I think they had two <laughs> they all had they had two cooks and like the owner was there and the owner was staying there like there's those like he was staying in a hotel that's just like right behind it it was like a oh um fair I forget what you call him but anyway um he was staying there so he could stay nearby the hotel so we come in at like um we come in at like oh eight seven thirty. Uh, in the evening to get some dinner because we drove over to the stockyards. That was a great idea. There was absolutely nobody there, so we didn't eat there. So we drove all the way back across, got back to um, got back to um, ooh, that's a lot better. Got back to um, that restaurant. So we walk in. It's a thirty minute wait in an old cafe, like an old pancake cafe. Within fifteen minutes, so we put our names down. Within fifteen minutes, that went from thirty minutes to two hour wait. 
This isn't Ruth Chris. This isn't Morton's. You know, this is the old Pancake 52 or whatever it's called. And, uh, huh? You get the tall stack? So what did I have? I think I had, I had waffles. And as my good buddy Mitch Hedberg used to say, I like waffles. They're just like pancakes with syrup traps. <laughs> but um, so, yeah, no, it, I mean, this is good food, but we waited, you know, we probably waited a good at least 30 minutes. And every about five minutes, another group of people would walk in and another group of people walk in. And so here's a little co- uh, courtesy for your whole this the host or the host is taking your reservations. And I'm sure this is probably a tactic. But when you're you know the wait is long, start out with that. Don't say ask how many and for a name and then tell them the wait. Go ahead and say, hey, it's two hours. I mean, let's just save everybody a little bit of time here. And, and I mean, who's waiting two hours for some flapjacks? So, um, or for anything. Have you ever waited two hours for a restaurant? No, but it's kind of like a, it's kind of like if you're a 911 dispatcher, you want to, you want to find out where the emergency is. You don't want to find out favorite colors right off the bat. <laughs> what is his middle name? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, I like the. What are you doing? I like the, I like the, the, the 911 recordings. Some of them they'll they'll pick it up and say nine one one. Do you need police, ambulance, or firemen? I'm like right off the bat, you're making this person in this emergency situation make a choice. Uh, shouldn't you use? Shouldn't these people be trained to use context clues from the caller within the first fifteen seconds? Welcome to emergency phone. Why don't you just tell me the emergency <laughs> service you need? <laughs> Press one for heart attack. For a stroke, pass t- uh, <laughs> press <for> two. <laughs> for anybody in your house wearing a wife beater and sweating profusely, pre- please press four. Para Espanol, maquinuevi. <laughs> so just so I had to call nine one one last, not this sun- past Sunday, but the Sunday before, because my heart went wacky again, and I'm driving into town, and I get ironically enough. So this is Sunday morning, so I had to miss church because we are getting a calf clipped on. Anyway, so my wife and boys went to church and everything, and I had to stay back. So I was going to meet him in town for lunch after church, and I got, and this is right before noon. I got all dressed and everything, and I started, I got in my pickup, and I kind of started feeling like, uh, something something to happen again. And then, so I started driving towards town about 10, I live, we live about, you know, 13 miles out of town, start driving in town. So I call my wife, call my wife. She doesn't answer. Call her a couple times, doesn't answer. And then, well, all this going on while I've got this loop recorder implanted where it'll start automatically recording if my heart gets to a certain rate. Well, if it doesn't, I'll autom- I can tell it to record through my phone. Anyway, apparently this thing won't hardly make any phone calls if you're trying to make it record. So whatever the case, I just hang up, turn the recorder off, and call 911. And ironically enough, I'm going by the cemetery at this point. So <laughs> I'm like, hey, if I bl- completely black out, you can just push me over and throw some dirt on top, and we'll just call it a day. But uh, they weren't too keen on me finishing my drive into town, which I'm already two miles. I'm only two miles away from the hospital at this point. So it's like, all right, well, I, so fortunately she didn't ask. She just said, What's your emergency? Or said, or, and I said, hi. <laughs> but um, anyway, so I make it in there, and it all. I, by the time I get there, of course, I'm about half back to normal. But anyway, so yeah. But nine one one, just ask, what's the problem, or how can I help you, or <laughs> tell us what the wait is. You know, at the mer- at the emergency room when we get there. But um, yeah, I've always, that's always bugged me when you when you're making somebody in a stressful situation <laughs> start quizzing them on stuff. So uh, because you might need, <laughs> do you need police, fire? <laughs> do you need police, fire, ambulance? One of the above, some of the above, or all of the above? <laughs> so anyway, that's that's kind of my beef with it. But since we're talking about. I guess police, you would think the police would be involved with this, but now we have a federally we have a federally endorsed crack pipe program. Now, Landon, you and I are too young to remember I mean, we remember some of the eighties, but that was when the big crack the crack cocaine epidemic was going on in the country. Am I right? 
Yes. Yeah. yeah. It, it was it was rampant in baseball in the eighties. <laughs> well, I wasn't really talking about professional sports, but was uh let's say who would have been uh who was the big eighties guy? Ken Griffey like Senior. So you had like Ricky Henderson, but there was a guy named Tim Raines. Daryl his nickname was Rock. And I always thought it was just like he was like durable, but according to the internet, they called him Rock because it stood for Crack Rock. They said he would slide in head first because he didn't want to break his mirror in his back pocket. <laughs> so wow, but that's true. I don't know. Disclaimer. But. Wow. Now it was Daryl Strawberry. That was about his time uh, range, yeah, wasn't him, it? Him and Doc Gooden on the Mets. They had, I think, they had some run-ins with some substances. Yeah. Yeah. Lawrence Taylor. LT. Oh yeah. What was that movie our Lawrence Taylor was on? He's giving final like <laughs> Oh yeah. Oh yeah. And don't do crack. Brings me to my final point. <laughs> what are you doing, Vicky? I'm just sitting here thinking about stealing LT's car. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so anyway, yeah. So but so what was the big conspiracy? I don't I don't know if, if it ended up being I'm hoping it was conspiracy. Theory. What was the big conspiracy theory with the whole crack e- epidemic back then, Landon? The conspiracy? Oh, I don't know. Okay. Well, since you don't know, I'll tell you. The, the conspiracy was the government was pushed out crack to keep down the black population. Oh. Well, this is, they literally say, so we'll just get into it. So this is Biden's, I'm, I'm here on the DailyMail.com. And the uh, heading is the Biden administration, uh, Biden administration to fund programs that hand out crack pipes to prevent infection and promote racial equity. And and to promote crack use. <laughs> <laughs> yes. But they literally say, hello, Waffles. Um, they literally say they're going to make sure that the black people who need to get crack pipes can get their crack pipes. So they literally say they're doing it. Can you imagine? Anyway, so continue with that. How much money are they spending on this? Okay, 30, 30, 30 million. This is a 30. I love how they call it a grant program. (laughs) So the grant program, which accepted applications on Monday. (laughs) What do you think the questionnaire for a crack pipe would be landed? (laughs) Do you like crack? <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. it's pretty basic. Mm. Uh, do you like smoked glass? Do you like clear glass, stained glass? I mean, I guess they had, I guess they had all this extra money now that not, now that they came out with a study that we don't need masks anymore. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, those masks are starting to drop. So, so we're gonna give masks to everybody, but and now what? What should we spend this on? Uh, crack pipes? Yeah, 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 crack pipes. That'll work. Well, you know that we were kind of doing some good work on cancer research. No, no, I don't need that. Yeah. Crack pipes. So, and we'll we'll get to uh, comparative problems here in a minute. But continuing on with the news story, the $30 million grant program, which accepted applications, which kills me, until Monday and will begin doling out money in May, intends to provide funds to nonprofits and local governments to make drug use safer to advance racial equity. Do you think... Do you think like so like they're giving out to nonprofits? So is like the Lions Club and like the Masons and like the Knights of Columbus, are they all gonna have crack pipe drives? <laughs> I mean, come on, why not, right? I mean crack pipe drives. I know in Hereford they got the new the new community center. I haven't seen the the, the crack recreational room yet. <laughs> Oh man, uh, this the, Michael Scott should have made a fun run race for the crack pipe or something yeah. like that. You know, I was reading some comments on this today, and like there were some people of a of a certain political party that were, I mean, literally on their <laughs> certain like, political party. They're like, "Oh, great! So you're going to give out crack pipes, but where are these people supposed to get their crack?" <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm serious. Like they're honestly complaining about that. Like, of like, course you they should are. Provide some crack for these people. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's um, you know, you knew something like this was going to happen after Nancy after Nancy Reagan passed away, and they went away, they did away with the just, just say, say no, because no. that was a great program. I think. Were you a part of the No Gang? The No No, I I I probably still have my Dare shirt somewhere though. Oh yeah, <laughs> Dare. What what 
what would you call this? What would you call this shirt? <laughs> Would this be like a chimney or something? Oh, God, man. Yeah, chimney. I dare you not to do crack. Just uh, be like a picture of some some dude with no teeth. <laughs> so far, this is the worst after-school special I think I've ever run across. Oh, my God. Oh, it's so awesome. So continuing on here, uh, included in the grant is money to purchase safe smoking kits slash supplies. A spokesperson for the HHS, which is Hereford High School, told the Washington Free Beacon that the that included in these kits could be u- could be pipes for users to smoke substances like crack cocaine and crystal methamphetamine, or any quote any illicit substance other than ivermectin and hydrochloroquine. <laughs> so that's really good. Uh, HHS said that the kits will serve to limit the risk of infection. Typically, users smoke out of glass pipes, which can lead to cuts and sores that become infected with diseases like hepatitis C. I'm hoping that's like organic glass or something is all I can say. You know, the people that work there are probably like the people that like screw up in the hospital. <laughs> or like just like the people that just barely pass. Like, uh-huh. They're like, all right, we got a job. <laughs> we got a good job. You're going to the, you're going to the. You're going to the crack fun center. <laughs> oh, yeah, right. So, um, yeah. what I say, like in New York, they've already helps like like help people with like oh like 184 overdoses already. Okay. Like in the building, I mean, it's something crazy like that because they've already got these things going in New York. Uh huh. So yeah. So you have people just sitting there waiting, like. Like it's your job to wait on a wait on an overdose. Like it is it no no he's okay no it is no he's okay. You know, I'm, I'm, you know, we all talk about how a big a um, genius, comedic genius, Dave Chappelle is. I'm kind of disappointed he mm-hmm. doesn't, he didn't already do a do a sketch on this, you know, 15 years ago, because because he had a who was the crack, who was the crack guy, what was his name? <laughs> um, the guy got, that's like picking up the bus. <laughs> it, it got the well, no, he's got the white lips and the yeah. Uh, he sees like a he sees like a nickel or a quarter on the ground, and he goes and picks up a bus. <laughs> <laughs> oh God, what was cocaine his name? In a, cocaine in a can. <laughs> Ty, Tyrone Biggins. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you, got, you got any? You got any of that crack? <laughs> cocaine in a can, man. <laughs> cocaine in a can. You know, I re- I read the book on the Dallas Cowboys in the early '90s when they were in the Super Bowl. Boys will be boys. Yeah, I have that like, book. Yeah, like three of the players, they like bought a house. Right mm-hmm. by the stadium or the practice facility. Mm-hmm. I assume that this recreational center probably <laughs> looks like what that house looks like. Oh man! So they literally have what you're saying is there's literally going to be government funded crack houses. Yes. So I mean, do they like when they build them? Do they start them out looking like a crack house, or does it start out like a nice place or whatever? Yeah, does it look like that two-story house on the fighter? <laughs> like, you just, like, get a bunch of rooms and, like, throw mattresses on the floor. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I know it. So it says handing out pipes is also intended to pr- prompt users to smoke rather than inject themselves with some substances, like meth, as injection is far riskier. So, applicant, here we get, here we go. Applicants for the program get priority if they serve underserved communities such as African Americans or Native Americans or LGBTQ people. Now, let's be honest. I would say, I'm willing to guess here, and I'm going to prejudge this, but I bet there's not a whole lot of crack users in the LGBTQ community, is there? I wouldn't wouldn't think so, but I, I don't know. Um, so the the very next sentence says the crack cocaine epidemic starting in the 1980s disproportionately ravaged the black community. And my editorial comment says, and now we are literally doing it on purpose. (laughs) Are you serious? The crack cocaine epidemic, uh, what? That we're doing it on purpose? No, I said that. Oh, okay. (laughs) I said my editorial comment. Oh, <laughs> it's nice. Pay attention. You're on this thing. <laughs> I know. Okay, so other harm reduction supplies that could be purchased with the grant money include testing equipment for STDs, overdose reversal medication, 
medication lock boxes, syringes, and substance test kits. The substance test kit, is that to tell how good the stuff is? or Because like you said, you know, they're not providing the crack. They're just providing the paraphernalia. Yeah, this, this would be a quality control job that Craig would be good at. <laughs> <laughs> Tyrone Biggins, you got any more tests you need done for you? So, like when Meredith is in the hospital and she's uh-huh. like, they got me on a lot of, on a lot of drugs. What is it? <laughs> He's Codeine, like Percocet, <laughs> Xanax, <laughs> Codeine, Hydrocodone. Okay. I don't know. Damn it. <laughs> I, what he says, something's like, I can't help her or something. I don't yeah. know. Anyway. Yeah. That's pretty good. So, um, Continuing on, it says the grant program lasts three years and includes 25 awards of up to $400,000. You notice how there's not an income limit on any of the crack users? So, like, if you earn over $200,000, you're not eligible. <laughs> Is I wonder it per- how many government officials take advantage of this program. Oh, my God, I bet all of them. <laughs> Jeez. I mean, those, those faces aren't just getting stretched on Botox, I can tell you that much. So the grant program lasts three years and includes 25 awards of up to $400,000. It is against the law to sell or distribute drug paraphernalia, including such pipes, unless authorized by state, local, or federal law. So get this. There were an estimated 100,306 drug overdose deaths in the 12-month period ending in April of last year, a 28.5% increase from just the year prior. Three quarters of those deaths involved opioids, some including synthetic opioids such as meth or fentanyl. So, and all those people also died of COVID. Yeah. Well, that's what they wrote down. Yeah. Sure. So, um, and like I said, some of this is already going on already. Like in San Francisco, they have safe injection sites to open up across the U.S. Such sites would be safe havens where drug users could use heroin or and other narcotics freely. So we literally, so our bo- our oldest kid is on, he's got a, a, not a very big dose of uh, stuff for ADHD, and it's a narcotic, and our pediatrician is an Amarillo, so we physically, every time we get a refill, we physically have to drive to the doctor's office to get the handwritten prescription, and then bring it back to our pharmacy in, Am- in Hereford to get it filled. They will, it's against the law, or maybe they don't have the equipment to, you cannot refill a narcotic over the, or not over the phone or online or, you know, via, you know, email or whatever. (laughs) We have to do that for his ADHD medication. They literally have safe injection sites for heroin and methamphetamine and fentanyl. What is it like? Like, what is it? Eight, 10 grains of fentanyl could like kill you. It's almost like ricin or something. And yeah. yeah. So they gave my dad, when my dad was on the vent, when he had that COVID, uh, one of the uh, sedatives was fentanyl. And of course, I mean, it's obviously the medical, I don't know if it's, you know, I mean, obviously it's the medical grade or whatever. And I mean, obviously it was a, a microscopic amount, but anyway, they use that to, um, you know, to put, keep people under. But, so anyway, it continues on. It says, the meanwhile, the Justice Department said, okay, safe injection sites. We already got that. Uh, the DOJ under the Trump administration had prosecutors who fought aggressively against a plan to open safe consumption sites in Philly. All, did anybody not see Philadelphia with um, Tom Hanks? That didn't work out very good. Although we cannot comment on pending litigation, the department is evaluating supervised consumption sites. Okay. So landed... Before we started recording, we were kind of discussing on what these would be comparable to. Um, so you're giving out crack pipes to crackheads. Tell me a couple things that you could compare this to. Well, I think we, we both had handing out matches to arth- arsonists. <laughs> yeah, so Matt, I had a mattress matches for pyromaniacs program. $20 million <laughs> for matches. That would buy a lot of matches. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So... Um, you know, it, and we got to take, we can't forget about the kids. Cause I mean, crack, I don't know if it affects a whole lot of kids or not, but kids have to be taken care of. So i I'm proposing we start a bullies for rent program and we just get a whole bunch of step kids and park them in, a, in everybody's schools, you know, that have been held back a couple of years. So the bullies for rent program, that way they can bully your kid every day at school to make them tougher. And they have, we have safe bullying sites like, you know, dark alleys playgrounds 
We we provide the whims, the money to give to the bullies, the lunch money to give to the bullies. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> well, then they wouldn't have any reason. Yeah, then they could just bully your kid for money just for like an iPod, you know, yeah. um, a new game for their Nintendo Switch or something. How about airplanes for terrorists, Landon? Do you think that would be a good one? Yeah, give them some flying lessons. That would be a, yeah, yeah, flying lessons for terrorists. Um, what if you just what if you just fought drugs? <laughs> <laughs> there you go. I don't know that hasn't worked out too well, but still. How about a drunk driver promotion uh, program? <laughs> just uh, uh, you can't sell that. You they won't provide the alcohol, but they just provide. They just go to AA meetings and just start handing out glasses. And uh, like, this would be like teaching drunk people to drive. <laughs> yeah, <while> pretty. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> unlicensed alcoholics. There we go. The unlicensed alcoholic program. Sit down, grab a beer, and shut up. Yeah. We're gonna... <laughs> and, and you got 47 minutes, and we're going to go out and start driving. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, how about rooftop apartments for depression treatment? <laughs> mm. I mean, that's wrong, but, you know, yeah. how is it much different at this point? So, um, roofies mm. for Bill Cosby, I think that would be a pretty comparable program. Uh <laughs> right. Do you think, yeah, yeah, Bill Cosby lemonade stand. Do you think, <laughs> do you think, like, the people that go to these things are, like, more emboldened to, like, you know, go a little bit more extreme because if they overdose, there's people there to help them immediately? Well, so I guess well, they would have to. I, mean, I, don't, I don't know. The, I don't know how crack works. They would have to have equal parts of crack and Narcan. You know what Narcan is, which I don't know. I mean, Narcan is the cops carry it around in the big cities. They revive heroin overdoses. I don't know if that does the same thing for crack, but um, Narcan's an anti-narcotic, basically. Well, I mean, it says on that, on the story I read, that there's people waiting, and, you know, they've helped a lot of people that overdose in the facility. Uh -huh. So I was just wondering if, if it would make people, which I would assume it would, make people more emboldened to... Kind of push the limits. I gotta say, it kind of sounds like a band aid, you know. In all honesty, is what this sounds yeah. like. It's really not a uh, cure for the cancer. It's more of a a band aid on top of it. But yeah, that's um, yeah. You provide. He's like, you go to a safe injection site. It's, why don't they just so these people, these crackheads, come in with the crack? Why don't they just retrace their steps to where they're getting the crack? Wouldn't that? Yeah. I mean. Yeah. Put a, put a little GPS on these guys. Yeah, you're you're making girls that have like five, you know, PIs wear ankle bracelets, you know, tracking monitors. But crackheads can't. Well, I mean, they'd probably try to sell their ankle bracelet for a crack. So do you get do you get to take your pipes home, or do you have to leave them there? <laughs> it's a it's a come and go policy, I believe. So, it's almost yeah. like a gym that has all the equipment there for you. <laughs> it's a gym that has. Yeah, I mean, I guess that's true. You can't. You can't really you have, leave with a stairmaster or anything. You you have to bring your own braces. Yeah. Do you think there's like so that goes into a whole another aspect. Do you think there's like unwritten codes among crackheads? Do they have a code of a code of honor? <laughs> like if you you're bring your they own. Do, they do, but nobody's been able to read it. <laughs> <laughs> What's well, unwritten? So yeah, that would make sense. I mean, you there's a code like there's an unwritten code of the gym, right? You clean off your machine. You. You know, you don't reserve a machine. I mean, I don't know. I've never been to a gym, so right. you're gonna have you to fill back up. Yeah, there's things you should do. Yeah, the unwritten. Everybody has an. There's unwritten codes at the stock shows. All kinds of things. You would think there would be some kind of unwritten code amongst crackhead community. Yeah, there's probably some kind of some kind of etiquette. I bet. Yeah, because um, I mean, otherwise it'd just be chaos at that point. Bring your own funyuns. I don't know if people get much <laughs> from crack, but. <laughs> Oh, let's see. That's not that's marijuana, man. Get the munchies. The crack deal. You, uh, I don't know. I think you just want more crack. Is basically what it amounts to. So I wonder. I wonder if they like conduct interviews with these people. I would pay to see that. <laughs> yeah. if, if like CNN offered like a hundred dollar a month subscription fee, I would probably pay it just to see, like <laughs> what, what they could call it, like crackheads closed captioning or something like that, and just be like. Bleh, 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 bleh. You know, it'd be like Biden talking, basically, is what it'd amount to. So, crack TV. Crack TV. It'd be like, like you're going to, uh, oh, what's that, walk-ons? They have that Chive TV on, you know, or like at a Synergy, they got that Chive TV that just has, basically, it's like YouTube, a whole bunch of clips of stuff. Crack yeah. TV. 
So yeah, there'd be a crack magazine, and they should have like obstacle courses in there. You make it fun. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you could like level up. <laughs> you know, you pass one course, you level up to the next crack level, or so. <laughs> I don't know. I'm just I'm just throwing things out there. You know, you yeah, can stop have me. Like, if... Have like dodgeball tournaments. <laughs> <laughs> you you think you'd be able to hit a crackhead <laughs> with a dodgeball? <laughs> That'd be so damn fast. It'd be like trying to shoot a rabbit with a BB gun. Oh jeez, yeah. It's just you wouldn't thought this would be real, but man, talk about I don't know. It's not full. It's almost full circle in the sense that you know in the eighties it was a conspiracy that they were purposely targeting minority communities with crack, and now they're literally saying we are gonna make sure you're gonna get as high as the white people. I mean, that's literally what they're saying. Did you notice nowhere in that story did it say the goal is to try to get these, eventually get these people into treatment? It never said said that anywhere in the story. It was just places where they won't overdose. That's crazy. That's the government for you. But we should do that here, and like when they come in, just arrest them. <laughs> we can't even get we can't even get sports betting legalized in Texas. Mm. Oh man, I'm still waiting on that. Well, Lana, I mean, I know. I've never seen crack. I've never seen Coke. You know, I've never seen the really hard stuff. I, I just, I don't know. I can't imagine being around that type of stuff, but you know, no, no, I don't know where to get it. And I, I wouldn't want to know. I wouldn't want to meet the person that knows. I wouldn't even want to meet the person that knows where they can get it. Not let alone the guy that has it. So Maybe. I've seen enough narcos and I've seen enough, <clears throat> um, Scarface to know that that ain't the place you want to be in life. Yeah. And Breaking Bad, it really wasn't crack, but man, it didn't didn't look like a fun life. No, I mean you start out as a chemistry teacher. Next thing you know, you're Heisenberg, the <laughs> drug kingpin. You know. Next thing you know, you got an ATM machine flattening your ass. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> well, Landon, we're gonna get out of here. Tell everybody where they can find you on social media. Uh, no twit, Landon forty four. And you can find me at Trader Brent. I'll drop this episode through that, and of course, you're going to find us all over the Global Ag Network. Check out all the other great ag podcasts. I'm really surprised they still let us on the network because we didn't say the word farm once, we didn't say the word subsidy once, we didn't say the word CRP check once, we didn't say the word uh, free money for farmers. So we didn't say any of that. So you know, it's kind of those words. I just Very did. Crazy. So, touche, touche. So, check that out. Also, check our good buddy Casey Seymour over on the Moving Iron Podcast. He's got a great uh, great outfit there. Um, so, yeah, we were, like I said, I was gone last week, so we didn't have an episode, but we're back. We're back like crack addicts, man. You're, you're not going to be able to get off of this podcast because it's so addictive. But um, And also, if we ever have a co-op episode, Landon's going to really blow the roof off with that. So... Yep. It's going to be off the bleeping hook. So, guys, until next time, y'all be cool out there. Y'all stay safe, and we'll ask you, what side of the line are you on? The Dryline Farmer Podcast, a member of the Global Ag Network. There's podcasts, and then there's this, the Dryline Farmer Podcast.